So on my board, I have cut my paper in half. This would be one long sheet of paper that's 12 by 18. I've cut it in half and I want it to be a nice long piece of paper. It is watercolor paper. Um, watercolor paper can hold water, whereas if you use just a plain sheet of paper, it's not gonna be able to hold the water very well. So just keep that in mind as we get to the um, painting step. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to draw my, my Easter lily from observation and I'm going to try to draw it from the same angle that I've drawn here. I want to fill up this paper as much as possible and when I draw with my pencil I'm not going to push very hard with my pencil lead because if I do um, and I don't like something that I've drawn it's hard to erase. So remember as you're drawing draw very lightly. Now I'm going to start at the top of my page so that I can fill up this whole space and I'm going to start up here and again, I'm drawing upside down, so just keep that in mind. Drawing upside down is a great technique. You could try it if you'd like to improve your drawing skills. Otherwise, um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when you start drawing from observation, it's important to um, look at the shapes that are created. I know in our head, sometimes we can think that a, a flower petal looks like something, but then when we start to draw it, it may not appear that way. So I want you to be very um, observant of the shapes of these petals. Some of them come to a complete point, others are rounded, um, some are curved. So just keep that in mind as you're drawing. And I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing up here. And I'm gonna, let's see, I'll draw like this. Very lightly. And as I'm drawing, I'm looking at my Easter lily, which is just right over here. So I'm drawing And it's okay if it comes off the edge of the paper. As a matter of fact, it, it'll be um, an interesting piece of artwork if you do make some of it come off of the paper. So don't be afraid to go all the way to the edge there. And you're just kind of getting a rough sketch of where everything goes. So don't worry about anything being exact. Now I've got the back part of my lily right here, and then my stem is going to come at an angle all the way down. When I start drawing the, the leaves, each of the leaves are gonna look a little different. And on my plant, I have, if I were to do it accurately, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, at least 15 leaves. But as you can see on here, I did not qu draw quite that many. So I'm just going to draw just a few of them. Very lightly, watching where they come out. drawing process. Some of these leaves sort of overlap. And just pay attention to what it is that you're drawing. Okay, so I've got my flower and my stem with several leaves drawn on my paper. The next thing that we're going to do is use a yellow and white crayon. Now the reason why we're gonna use a crayon is because we're going to trace over every single pencil line that we've drawn and that wax in the crayon is actually going to resist the watercolor paint once we start painting. And it's actually a really cool effect so it makes your lily sort of stand out. Um, so, but what I wanted to show you is that in the center here, these little pieces of the flower, we're going to color those with a yellow crayon. So color those first with a yellow crayon. Okay. And then take your white crayon and you're going to literally trace over every single pencil line that you drew. Every single one of them. So go ahead and do that and we'll come back together in just a few minutes.
All right, once you've drawn over every single one of your pencil lines with your white crayon, you want to come into your actual flower and start coloring in the flower with your white crayon because that's going to resist the color from the watercolor paints. And our Easter lilies are white anyway, so you want to just, it's going to be hard to see, but you want to color it in the best that you can. And it's okay if not everything gets colored because that'll create some variation in your painting. But you do want to have as much of that colored in as possible. All right, now let's get ready to paint. When it comes to watercolor paint, you're going to need a lot of water. So make sure you have some water, make sure you have some paper towels and a sponge because that's going to create some texture and some interest on your painting. The first thing that I'm going to paint is my green stem and leaves. So I'm going to get a You'll see where it resists from that crayon, so don't worry about getting too much on there. I do want just a little bit, because there is a little bit of green if I'm looking at my lily. All right, now we want to paint the background, and I'm choosing blues and purples. You can choose whatever color you'd like, but first, before I get started, I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to dab some water onto my paper. Now again, if you're not using watercolor paper, don't add too much water to your paper because it'll start to get thin and it'll wear out. So go ahead and just work in a small area at first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paintbrush with some blues. And you'll see how the water just starts to spread out the color on there. I'm going to go around the edge of my flower here, add some purples and just let the colors really mix. All right, I'm just about done. I'm just finishing up this bottom here with the paints. And as you can see, some of the color is pulling up onto my papers, onto the paper. And I want to, let's see, I'm gonna finish painting this little area first, getting those colors in there. So I've got all that area. I've got a paper towel. And what I'm going to do is just gently dab some of that water off and you'll see that it creates this really neat texture on my painting. So go ahead and do that up here where I had a little bit of green. You can dab right over that. And there you have it. There is your Easter Lily watercolor painting. I hope you've enjoyed this free lesson and if you're interested check out my website. It'll be posted on the Facebook page and I hope to see you um, creating some more amazing masterpieces. Um, thank you for joining us, and since it's Easter, um, I just wanna leave you with, he is risen, and you say, he is risen indeed. Happy Easter. My seven-year-old was sitting right next to me as I was doing this demonstration, and this is her interpretation of the Easter lily, and I wanted to show it to you, um, and I just think it's awesome how all of our artwork turns out completely different, even though we're we're looking at the same um, Easter lily, or in your case, you might be looking at a picture of our Easter lily, and we're doing this project together, but it still turns out completely different. So here is my example, and here is her example of what she created. It's a beautiful Easter lily, and if your parents say it's okay and they're willing, um, I'd love to see your artwork uploaded to um, the Facebook page as well. So um, and make sure you include your age. You don't have to include your name, but include your age so that we know how old you are drawing your um, Easter lily.